Hello, everybody, and welcome to Plaid Stallion's Toy Ventures. I'm Brian, and, well, I did a really impulsive thing this weekend. I got in the car and drove eight hours to Columbus, Ohio, to attend PowerCon 2022 at the very last minute. PowerCon was traditionally a Masters of the Universe convention that was held, I think, primarily in California. Now they've moved to Columbus, and they're shifting focus to encompass more than Masters of the Universe, to become a more well-rounded action figure show. And they had a really unique approach to it, uh, not inviting celebrity guests so much, but toy companies themselves, uh, several YouTubers and uh, cosplayers and sculptors and artists from the toy industry themselves. And that was a really appealing thing for me because uh, my friends at Mego Corporation were going to be there. The good folks at Nacelle were there actually with my book in hand. And of course, uh, my friend Steve was setting up as well, and he had Toy Ventures magazine available for sale. So I really wanted to come down and see some old friends and meet some folks for the first time. And it was uh, well worth the trip. Uh, my only regret of PowerCon would be not staying longer. I wish I could have stayed the Saturday and the Sunday because I feel like I missed a lot. For its first time of not being a solely Master of the Universe convention, I think they fully succeeded. Yes, there was a lot of He-Man toys there, and I was expecting that. But it was very well-rounded. There was a lot of other great vintage toy representation here. Uh, there was a lot of temptation for me. And to me, that's always the sign of a great show. I saw some stuff I truly did not expect to see at this show. So for the first time that they have done a show like this, they have succeeded in my eyes. So what I thought I would do with you folks today is to give you a slideshow of some of that vintage toy goodness I saw. And then after the slideshow, I can go into what I wish I had bought or what I wish I could afford. And also what I did pick up because I got some really neat stuff. Hang on.
wanted to remind everybody that issue seven of toy ventures magazine is now available if you missed reading old school print magazines about vintage toys then toy ventures may be for you it celebrates at toys and action figures from the 1960s to about the 1990s we have seven issues right now to choose from on a variety of subjects details for my store are in the link thank you for considering So before I get into what I bought, I want to talk about the stuff I, you know, if I were a rich man, what I would have walked home with. The first thing I would have absolutely purchased was this boxed Goldarak Shogun Warrior from Europe. This is just so beautiful. Um, 
there was a lot of Shogun Warriors at the show. I was really surprised and and quite pleased because that's what I hope to see at shows. The other piece that I really found interesting was these original Dune hard copies of the LJN action figures. While I'm not a big fan of the film Dune, I think this is really neat, and I just couldn't believe that such toy history was available for purchase. I did not have $8,000, and if I did, I would probably buy something different, but still, really, really cool to see. My only regret with the show, other than that, is that I could not find a single Tonka Steel Monsters action figure. I'm a huge fan of that line. I really thought I was going to go home with somebody I didn't have, but unfortunately, nobody brought any to this very 80s-centric toy show. So let's dig into what I did pick up. The first thing I had to have at PowerCon was this. This is a Falcon from Brazil. I plan very much to do a Toy Ventures on the whole Falcon line because I'm obsessed with it. But let's just say this is basically the Brazilian version of G.I. Joe. It was produced under license from Hasbro. But after Hasbro called it quits with G.I. Joe, Estrella, the company that makes Falcon, kept going. And in the early 1980s, they took this sci-fi bent. And when you look at these toys, you just, you just really wish you had them as a kid. They are amazing. And I have a couple of original Falcons that I'll share in my episode. But... They're really expensive and hard to find. So Estrella is actually reproducing this. And you can buy the reproductions at places like Cotswold. But to see it in the wild was just so amazing. This guy had about three different figures. And this was my dream one. I just love the way this nuclear warrior looks with his shield and his ray gun and that awesome helmet. And I cannot wait to take this guy out of the box. It's a beautiful box. I'm going to be really careful and save the box. But... I really want to pose this guy. They are just so awesome looking. And I'm going to be purchasing more of the Falcon line just to support it. This next piece is something really special to me. And the way I came about it was really interesting as well. During the show, I kept kind of looking at a couple of, you know, broken down Shogun Warriors, thinking I would go home with at least one of them and fix them up. And, but the pricing was a little high, and I wasn't sure, and I kept looking for something special. And then I heard someone say, hey, Brian, and it turned out it was my friend Mike from Vampire Robots, who I've never actually met, but Mike's done me a few solids in the past. And I went over to his booth and checked it out, and I found this beauty, which is a mini Godai configure on the card, although, you know, the card's been damaged. And it is, of course, of uh, Mazinga. I don't have this. These things just disappeared. They used to be all over Toys R Us, and it was like one day they just all went somewhere. And I really wish I had more of them, and this was the first one I found, and this was so special to me. I was really glad that it happened, because at the time I was thinking, oh, man, what do I, I don't know what I want to do, and this made it so easy. So sometimes fate uh, finds you things. Uh, these were basically, you know, follow-ups to the Shogun Warriors, uh, they are not knockoffs. They are legitimate Bandai product. This was a major score for me. I'm really glad I got this. I actually bought a lot of figures at PowerCon, but most of them were clones for my son. The last thing I got for myself, I got from Frank Wojo at Absolutely Retro, which most Mego collectors probably know. And that is the Star Trek The Motion Picture Spock figure. And... I'm really fascinated with Star Trek, the motion picture. I, I loved it as a kid, and I had all the toys. And the movie wasn't so hot, but I, I really, for some reason, loved the comics and all the other stuff going on at that time, all that ballyhoo. And I've always wanted a figure of Spock in his, like, leisure wear. And this is a really cool figure. It's a beautiful head sculpt by Andrew Koval. And I'm really glad. Frank Frank was a great guy to work with. And um, I was sort of the guest of Frank and Mego Corporation this weekend, so their hospitality was really appreciated. They really went out of their way to make me feel welcome. And all in all, it was just a terrific weekend. So I'm really... This Spock means a lot to me, if you catch my drift. And that, my friends, is my look at PowerCon. 
I went in with very modest expectations. I was mainly going to see friends and meet some folks. And I'm really happy with every experience I had there. I ran into some friends I haven't seen in three, four years. Uh, there was a few surprise people I didn't even know were there. Uh, overall, I can't wait to go back. Uh, the, the vibe in that show was fantastic. And I heartily recommend if, if PowerCon returns to Ohio next year, check it out. It's, it's well worth it. Even if you're not a Masters of the Universe collector, and, and I'm not, uh, this is uh, this is a show that transcends that, and they've already succeeded that way. So well done, PowerCon, and uh, I'd love to know what you think. Uh, what would you like to pick up from this show? There was a lot of great toys. Uh, uh, tell me in the comments below what you would have picked up at PowerCon, or you can hit me up in my Facebook group, Pod Stallions. That's it for me this week. If you're new to this, I hope you'll consider hitting like and subscribe. This is what I do every week. And if you're a regular, please consider sharing this. Uh, I would really appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Uh, until next time, be well, and talk toys, not others. Cheers.